My name is Mohammed Said, and I'm a content learning architect here at Udacity. In this video, we'll learn together more about the async and awaited JavaScript. It becomes a little bit confusing for people when they are learning JavaScript for the first time. So in this video, I'll do my best to make it as easy and as beginner friendly as possible. So let's get started. Hi everyone. So let's start discussing async and await. But before we start doing this, what's happening? Like, why do we need something called async and await as part of the JavaScript? So I really want us to zoom out a little bit and focus on the big picture. As part of your application development, you will need to talk to some external data sources to get some data, APIs mainly. So when you're doing this, you're using JavaScript as a programming language. But JavaScript itself cannot talk to an API, cannot send a request that will go through the network, get some data, and show it on your user's screen. The entity that will actually do this is a browser. So JavaScript has this capability of communicating with the browser and ask the browser to do some stuff. You can think of it as delegation. So JavaScript is able to delegate some of the workload to the browser, mainly network one, and then the browser will get some work done and retrieve the answer or the data back to the JavaScript. This will take some time. The browser might, and by time, by the way, I don't mean seconds. It can be milliseconds, actually milliseconds, but this is time. Remember the big umbrella we're under is that we have a web page that the user is currently interacting with, and we cannot hold that interaction. We don't want to freeze the web page while something is happening in the background. So JavaScript is going to ask the browser, hey, browser, can you go? Grab me that data from the following URL or IP address, and then the browser will take some time, go grab the data, and give it back to JavaScript. So now, the program you're writing is no longer relying on JavaScript only. The browser is in the picture, and the browser might take some time. So, we need some coordination. So, some code, which is part of your program, is not going to be happening synchronously. It's going to happen asynchronously, which means it's outside of your control when you're writing code in JavaScript. However, you do not want to interrupt the flow of your entire program. Remember, your entire program is basically related to a web page if you're doing front-end development with JavaScript. So, let's take a look at this. Here I have an example of a demo that will connect to a popular API called the Dogs API one. Basically, it's an API. You send a request to it. It gives you a URL to a random dog picture. It's a cute API. So what I have here is mainly some HTML prepared for us and some styling, which is not mainly the topic of today. We're mainly here for the JavaScript part. How we're going to connect to that API, get the data, and then display it on the web page. So right now, if I click on that button, nothing is going to happen. And it's our duty to write the JavaScript to make it work. So first thing I'm going to do, let's take a look here. We have the button. Let's give ourselves some space. We have the button here, which has an ID. And we got this container, which also has an ID. So we need to go to JavaScript, have a reference to those two elements, and then we start controlling them from the JavaScript. This dev is where we're going to display the image, and this button, we need to listen to any events that will happen, right? mainly the click event. So let's go to JavaScript. I'm going to say const fetch button equals document.get element by ID. fetch button and let's also grab a reference to the dog image container and yeah now I'm gonna 
also attach an event listener to the button. So let's say fetch button dot add event listener. What kind of event we're gonna listen to? It's the click event. The second question is what do we want to happen when the click takes place? We pass in a function which is going to fetch some random dog image. We haven't built it yet. This is the one we're gonna develop now, this function. So let's start building it. So this function is gonna be fetch random dog image. What will happen is that the function will send a request to an API, get the data, render it on the screen, slash inside the dog image container. Okay, so this function is gonna take some time. It's one of those functions that will rely on the networking part. So JavaScript is enabling us to label those function by writing async here. So this is a function that might take some time. So we just label it by writing async in front of the function name. Okay, so let's send the request to the API. So I have the API endpoint here on the right side. This is the response we're expecting. So we'll get a message and we get status. If we click on that message, we're gonna get a random cute image dog. So, uh, okay, let's connect to it. Let's go back here. I'm gonna say fetch. And here is the URL to that endpoint or API. And I'm gonna print the console.log just to see the output. So I'm gonna say response and response. Let's also get the data. Response to JSON. And console.log data data. And I'm gonna also bring the image URL which is part of the data. So I'm gonna say data dot message. This is where the URL was stored. And let's also print it in the console. And let's also guard this whole code with a try and catch. So I'm gonna wrap it inside and try and catch statement. Try, catch, just in case any error. Console.error, error, fetching dog image, and I'm gonna print the error here. Let's save. So let's bring our comments here, fetch. Get the data. Render it on the screen is a function we will develop. But for now, let's assume that by just printing the URL we're rendering. So we're sending a request, we're getting some data, and then we're gonna render it on the screen. For now, just printing. Okay, let's test. So I'm gonna go to the here, to the right side, go to inspect, I'm gonna go to the console. And let's trigger that function by clicking on the button. Uh oh, error. Reference error response is not defined. And let's take a look here. Okay, const response. Forgot const response here. Let's save, reload, clear. And let's click again. We got something called promise. Okay. So what goes wrong here? Like, well, and instead of getting the dog image, we got something called the promise. This is because fetch, remember, is something that will go to the browser 
and will invoke the network and then the browser will start getting some data for us and it will come back with it to the JavaScript. This will take some time. So and instead of actually getting us the data, it returned us a promise, which represents as a future value. So now what we actually need to do, we need to wait for that promise to be fulfilled. Okay, again, JavaScript asked the browser to get it something through the network. So the browser went and started trying to get that thing, which is a dog URL here in the situation. But this will take some time. So the browser is going to give a promise to the JavaScript. And it's on JavaScript to wait for that promise to be fulfilled. So how can we actually wait? So we do not want this console.log to happen, which means we do not want line 8 to be executed while our promise is not fulfilled yet. Because look here, promise build pending. So it's taking some time. So how can we do this by writing await? Similarly here, we write await. So in anything, I will take some time We'll just add a wait. So by adding a wait, we're preventing the line that comes afterwards here from executing while the line that will take some time is still work in progress. So let's save. Clear my console. Click. Okay. Now we're getting some data. So we got the response. We got some data. And it's good news. So now we have the seed to develop our web page. So if I take this URL and paste it here, good, I can see a cute little dog. Okay, let's go back to our app. So now we're just one step away from a complete app. I we need to build one function to update the user interface. We can add it here. Function update user interface. This one, all it will do it just takes the image. So I need to pass the image URL here. Image element equals document dot create element. So what we will do will create an image tag inside the container. Everyone here we have a dev which is empty, and what we will do with JavaScript, we will go and we'll programmatically create that image. So src equals and we're gonna add that URL. This is what we are doing now, but we're doing it programmatically using JavaScript. So let me delete this, go back here. I'm gonna say image element dot src equals the image URL. This will be given here as an argument. And now I will append it to that div, this one. So we have created an element, an image element. We need to append it. So I'm going to say dog image container dot inner HTML. Just make sure we're resetting it. And then we're going to say dot append child. And then we're going to add the image element. And we will call our function here. And instead of console.log image URL, we will call our function this one and we'll give it the URL let's save clear click we made a mistake create element but only zero were provided okay so we forgot to give the actual image so here we need to supply one argument which is the tag name that we're trying to create let's save clear the console click on fetch Ta -da! we have a good looking dog now Every time you click, it will clear the previous result, which is here on line 25, and then it will append the new one on 26. So let's click again. Okay, so now we have a fully functional demo uh, that uses async kind of wait. Hopefully this video made it more clear to you. And remember the big picture always, JavaScript is going to use the browser to help with that networking part. And this thing might take some time. That's why we have to add async and await. This will prevent 
the, those lines, the lines that are hanging on and waiting on that result to be retrieved from executing before the results arrived. Thank you. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. Thank you. If you liked the video, please make sure to hit that like button, share it with someone who might need help with the same topic, and leave us a comment below. Don't forget to also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.